little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today I'm going to show you how to crochet the Karen Cakes Versatile Vest. And I found this pattern actually searching through Pinterest. And I'm going to put a link in the description box down below. And it's really, really quite simple. And it is also, uh, you know, something that you can tweak as far as the size goes. Now, the pattern given uh, does give two different sizes, one for small, one for large. Me, well, I'm kind of a medium kind of guy. So... I decided to tweak the pattern a little bit so that um, somebody like me could wear it. You know, you never know. Um, this colorway in the Karen Cakes uh, is pumpkin spice, I believe, and I used about two skeins for this piece. Now, um, the yarn that I'm going to be using today for this example is in the colorway of fruitcake, and I love all the different colors and everything. You know, this one, so autumnal, absolutely love it. Um, you know, and I'm gonna show you how to do this. Of course, you could use whatever yarn you like. Um, it called specifically for Karen Cakes or any color changing yarn. Also, it did state to use a size K hook. Me, I'm a bit of a rebel. So I used a size I. Focus, thank you a size I crochet hook. And uh, so like I said, I did a slight variation, um, you know, going away from the recommended hook size, also doing a sort of middle ground between the two sizes given. And I shall explain that a bit later. But for now, let's get right into it, shall we? Okay. Alrighty, so we're going to start with a slip knot, of course. And, of course, you could start this with the magic ring or by doing, as the pattern suggests, doing a chaining of four and slip stitching to create a ring. Me, you know me, I like to do things a little bit different. So what we're going to do is actually start by chaining up four. One, two, three, four. And then into that first chain, we're going to be doing some double crocheting. Now, this chain of four counts as our first double crochet, and we're going to need to do three more into this first chain. So that's one and two and three. So we have a total of four double crochets, and then we chain one, and then do four more double crochets into that same chain. And I like doing it this way because when you do a chaining of four and slip stitching it to create a ring, it becomes a little bit bulky, I find. But by doing this, and then just cinching the tail, it's a bit more flush. You know, just a little tip. So for our first row, it is a total of four doubles, chain one, and four doubles. And we shall go on to row two. All right, so for row two, I'm gonna start by chaining up three, one, two, three, and when you're chaining up your three, you're going to want that last chain in particular to be loose because in every row thereafter, we're going to be working into that third chain. So it will behoove you to do it just a little bit loosely, makes it a lot easier to stitch into later. So chaining up three, one, two, and three, turn the work, and then into this first stitch, we're going to do three doubles. For a total of four double crochets on this end. Then without chaining anything in between here and this space here, 
we're going to do three double crochets into this center space. That's one, two, three. Then we chain one and do three more double crochets into the center space. That's one, two, and three. Then into the fourth double crochet, this one right here, we're going to do four double crochets. All right. And yes, it can be a little bit tricky, but take your time, be patient, yet persistent, and you can do it. So all into the top of this first double crochet. We're doing four double crochets. Then one more. All right, and that is the end of the second row. All right. All right, and row three is going to be pretty much exactly the same as row two and from here on in. So we're chaining up three. One, two, three. Turn the work. Then three doubles into this first stitch right here. That's one, two, three. And it's always the first cluster and the last cluster is always four doubles. Every other cluster that we're going to be doing is going to be just three doubles. So we did our four, then without chaining, we go directly into the next space here with three doubles. And then into the center space right up here, three doubles. Chain one, three more doubles into that same space. Now I know that this is very, very reminiscent to the granny style shawl that I had done quite some time ago, but I really, really like this variation and I really wanted to share it with you all. You know, and it is versatile and I really do like that fact. You know, it could be a vest, it could be a shawl, it could be a funky scarf. All right, so then into this last double crochet, we're going to go in and do, at the top there, we're going to do a total of four double crochets. All right, and it really is as easy as that. And so we're going to keep doing this in this exact same fashion for quite a number of rows, actually. One, two, and three. Turn the work and three more doubles into that first stitch. Two and three. Okay. And then into the next space, three doubles. And this project is great for if you want to watch TV, a movie, listen to an audiobook, what have you, while doing your stitching, because the majority of this project, you really don't have to agonize over the pattern. Just keep track of how many rows you have gotten done, and you can't go wrong. Now, as I said, the pattern gives two variations, and I'm going to give you a third option. Of course, this also does largely depend on what yarn you're using, 
as well as what hook size you're using and what your gauge is. That will have an impact on the size. So there is a little bit of fudging and tweaking that may very well need to be done. And that's understandable because you want this to actually fit somewhat, you know, as opposed to a conventional shawl where it just drapes and dimensions are not quite so important. This, however, since it has the arm sleeve openings, you want it to actually fit you a bit better. So you may need to do a little bit of tweaking. You know, I'm going to be perfectly honest about that. All right, and so we have reached the end of yet another row, and it's really as simple as that. See, we've got four at this end here, and we've got our two in the center separated by a chain one, and we have our four over here. And that is four rows right away. All right. Okay, so basically you're going to continue on in this exact same fashion. Now, as far as the three different sizes I mentioned, the two that are given within this particular pattern um, would be going on in this fashion for 23 rows for the small, 27 rows for the large, or for what I did is a total of 25 rows. And so what I'm going to do is, again, my own slight variation, and I'm going to stop on the 25th row. So if you're doing the small, go until you reach the 23rd row. Don't, don't finish the row, mind you. And if you're doing the large, stop when you reach the 27th row. But if you're going to follow along with what I'm doing, then you would stop on the 25th row. Okie dokie. All right, so I'm going to stitch a whole bunch off camera and uh, I'll meet back up with you. All right. Hello again. So I've been stitching along and I am up to, for me, row 25. Now, if you want the smaller version, you would be crocheting up to row 23 or the larger version, row 27. So for me, like I said, I'm on row 25 right now. And we're going to start it just as we do with every other row, simply enough. So again, starting by chaining up three. Turn the work and do your three doubles into that first stitch right there, just as we have been. No big deal. We got this. All right, so that is the first of six clusters that we're going to need to do to start this row. For me, row 25. For others, row 23 or row 27. But this, for me, is row 25. This is the middle ground, the one that I figured out myself that works for me. But by all means, do what works for you. And of course, you can tweak this pattern however it is that works for you. All right, so I've got three clusters. I need three more, and then we can get into creating the armholes. And this row and the next row are the only, I would say, tedious rows in this entire project. After the next row, it is smooth sailing for the rest of the project, which I rather like, and I'm sure you will too. All right, so I've got a total of five. One more. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. 
Now, regardless of whether you were doing the small, medium, or large size, you would do on row 23, 25, or 27, six of these clusters at the beginning of the row. So then, depending on what size you're going for, if you're going for the small size, you would chain 22 stitches from after doing the, the six clusters. If you're doing the small size, you would do 22 stitches, okay? If you're doing the medium size like I am, you would do a total of 28 stitches, 28 chains, excusez-moi. If you're doing the large size, you would do 34 chains, okay? So I'm gonna do 28 chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28. And in this case, it really does pay to double check. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. Perfect. Okay. So then we are going to skip some of these clusters down here. We're going to go over these. Now, if you're doing the small size, you are going to skip eight of these clusters. If you're doing my size, you're going to skip 10. If you're doing the large, you're going to skip 12. Okay. So I am going to skip 10, me personally. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then into this next space, we're going to do another cluster. So to repeat the small size, you would skip eight clusters, the medium size, 10 clusters, or the large size, 12 clusters. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And especially when you're doing a project like this, it really does pay to double check your counts. Believe you me. So now we have our cluster here, and we're just going to be doing clusters to the tip and then a bunch down this way. And it should be, let me see here. Yes, it should be a total of 10 clusters. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then the 10th would be in the tip here. Then along this side, you would of course do another one in the center. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Then you would do your chaining again down this side according to what size you're going for. And then you would end after doing your chaining by doing a total of six clusters. Now keep in mind that this end counts would be counting as a cluster, right? So to make sure that you get it right, you would have one here, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. I'm, I hope that makes abundant sense. <laughs> so what I'm going to do off camera is I'm going to continue doing my clusters along this side, which would be for a total of 10, 10 this way, then do my chaining for, in my case, <clears throat> it would be 28 chains, and then at the end have my six clusters. All right, so I'm gonna meet back up with you when I am done with that.
Alrighty, so as you can see, I did my second armhole, as promised. And now, like I said, this is the row that is going to be mm, a little bit tedious, but you can totally get through it. I know you can. So as we have been doing, start by chaining up three, turn the work, and we're going to continue on just as we have been, but when we're stitching into the chain, it can be a little bit fiddly, to be perfectly honest, but we don't have to do it that much, so it's not that bad, really. So I've got our first cluster, and we're going to do our clusters just as we have been until we reach the chain. And now in theory, you could crochet around the chain and not into the chain, but I would strongly advise against it because then your clusters can shift and I wouldn't, wouldn't advise it. Um, if you actually do your clusters into the chains, they will remain in place and it will look infinitely neater. You know, I know that I'm a big advocate of shortcuts when they work. This one will not work, trust me. <laughs> um, so I'm just doing my clusters as normal. I know I'm anything but normal, but hey, let's just keep going, shall we? <laughs> All right, so we have reached the chain. Dun, 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 dun. All right, so now let me just shift my work here. Sorry. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to do our first cluster into that first chain. And yes, it can be a little bit fiddly, so be sure that you're not going into the top of the double, but you're actually going into the chain. And you're going to want to grab both loops also. Don't, go, don't just grab uh, the top loop. Go for both. It'll look a lot better. Believe you me. And that is our first cluster right there. As you can see, yes, not going into the top of this double, but into that chain with our three double crochets. And since our yarn has changed color, it'll be a lot easier to see what I'm doing, which does help. So now we're going to do the next cluster. We're going to skip two chains and into the third chain, we're going to do our next cluster. Three double crochets as usual. So we have two unworked chains in between our clusters there. And then we skip two more chains, go into the third, going under both loops of the chain. You know, it's really not that bad. Yes, it is a bit fiddly, but it doesn't take that long. Just be patient with yourself and you can get through it just as I am. It's all right. Fortunately, this is the only row where this aspect is incorporated. Okay, see, we're almost there. All right, so I'm going to keep doing this off camera, and when I reach near the end, I'll be right back, okay? All right. All righty, so did a bunch off camera, and I have three chains left, which is good because 
that will enable us to do our last cluster by skipping again two chains, going into this last chain here, the one right before these double crochets. And that's exactly what you want. So for me, it is a matter of 10 clusters over the length of the chain. If you're doing the small size, it would be eight clusters. And if you're doing the large size, it would be 12 clusters. Me, I've got 10, all right? So now that I'm no longer working within the chain, until I reach the other armhole, it's smooth sailing. So you would just continue to do your clusters just as you have been, nothing new, nothing changed. And you would keep going all the way up to the point and then all the way down to this side. And then just like we had done before, you would do a you know, cluster into this space and then into the first chain, being sure not to do your first cluster into here, but into the actual first chain stitch. So you would do a cluster here, skip two chains, do a cluster into the next, and so on and so forth for a total of either 8, 10, or 12 clusters along the length of the chain, and then finish off by doing the remaining clusters here. And then all you would have to do is on the following row, it would be just working within the spaces in between the clusters, just as you have been. And it's really quite that simple. So then, as I said, you would just keep stitching along in the usual fashion, you know, going over the stitches that you did along there, and you would keep going. Now, in the pattern, it states that they had done a total of 43 rows, and so did I. Um, and uh, I think it worked out rather well, actually. And I absolutely love the colorways, as always. <laughs> And uh, the size, I find that it worked out rather well. And uh, I really, really hope that you give it a try too, because it's super easy, super fun, and it creates a nice spin on your typical shawl shape. So listen, my dears, if you enjoyed this tutorial, which I hope you did, please hit the like button down below, because your support means ever so much to me. I always appreciate it. And also, if you have any questions, comments, what have you, please do so in the comments section down below. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button already, do that too, because I try to post videos as often as I can, whether it be knitting, crocheting, or audiobook narration. So listen, my dears, until next time, I want you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and above all, stay stitching. I love you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.